All right, in this problem here, we are looking at solving quadratic equations using the zero product property. I'm going to give some more examples here. Uh, specifically, at this time, we are asking you to find the x-intercepts, otherwise known as find the roots. The roots of a parabola are also known as the x-intercepts. Well, what do we know? Again, whenever we know an x-intercept, we know that the x value is unknown to us, but the y value is zero. So I'm looking for that one, and that's an and sign, not a plus, and another one, because typically there are two points where our parabola, if I have a graph, will cross my x-axis, two points there and there. Typically, not always. Let's see what happens here. So in order to solve it, first thing I'm going to do is plug in 0 for y. And then, now that it's in standard form, I want to go ahead and I want to factor it. I again see that it's just x squared, so I'm going to know it goes down to x and x. And I know I have a diamond problem where the product is going to be 2, because 1 times 2, 1 times 2 is 2. That gives me my product. And my sum is always going to be the coefficient of x. What well, multiplies to get 2 but adds to get 3? That's 2 and 1, giving me plus 2, plus 1. Therefore, the zero product property says if I have two things being multiplied, in this case, x plus 2 times x plus 1, and they have multiplied to give me 0, well, then in that case, either x plus 2 must equal 0 to make this true, or x plus 1 must equal 0. We take our two groups with x, and then we put them each equal to 0. And I solve that. You could probably see what the answer is without actually solving it. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and solve it anyway just to show you the steps that you could show as you're doing this here. So we find that x is both negative 2 and negative 1. That means that my roots are right, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. Those are the two points where this parabola will cross the y-axis. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in this one here, what if I don't want to find the roots, though? What if instead I actually want to find a different y-value? Well, in this case, y-value being 12. What's the value of x that makes it true when y is 12? That means I'm looking for a point where y is 12. Well, once again, if I have a parabola, I'm just going to draw a generic one right here. And let's say 12 is up here. All right, I'm looking where does this parabola cross that line where y is 12. And again, you can see typically the parabola will cross it twice. All right, so again, I'm going to plug in 12 this time instead of 0, giving me x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I want to use the zero product property to solve this. I can't use the zero product property unless it's equal to 0. So therefore, I have to get things in standard form. Right now, this 12 is preventing it from being standard form. So I'm going to start by subtracting that 12 from each side. All right, that then gives me 0 on the left side, giving me x squared plus 3x minus 10. And now I have an equation that is a quadratic. It's set equal to 0 in standard form. And I can factor it because it's our just x squared shortcut here giving me two things that multiply to get negative 10, but add to get 3. In this case, that is 5 and negative 2, giving me plus 5 and negative 2. And then I can set both of these equal to 0, because if I'm multiplying these two groups to get 0, then one of them could equal 0 to make this true. And therefore, I could find that x could be negative 5, or in this case over here, x could be 2. Those are the two values of x that make this equation true. Therefore, negative 5, 12 is one point on my graph. And 2, 12 would be the other point on my graph. Again, you can use this process to find any x value for a given y value. Essentially, you're just solving quadratic equations here. Let's take a look at another one. Now let's just focus on solving them. Just here's an equation, solve for x. What value of x makes this true? Well, again, make sure it's in standard form first. In order to use the zero product property, it must be equal to zero. So in this case, a it is. And I see it's just x squared again, which means there's no GCF at this point because I have a trinomial here. And what multiplies to get negative 8 but adds to get 6? Well, that's going to give me... That's going to give me nothing. I can't think of anything that will multiply to get negative 8 but add to get 6. That means this one's not factorable. Does that mean that it doesn't work? That Does that mean there's no solution for x? Well, no. And if you go to my next video, you'll find out how I would deal with one of these when it is not factorable. What would you do with that case? 
All right, and we're gonna find out what you can do there because there is a value of x that makes this work, but we can't get there by factoring. All right, so let's take a look at the next one here. All right, uh, oh, and just so you know, by the way, I did change this in the actual book. This was a plus eight. All right, so if you're looking at 72a, and it's a plus eight in the book, uh, I changed it just to show an example of what's gonna happen and where we're going with this. Let's look at the next one, b. All right, and b here, once again, I've got a set equal to zero. It's a quadratic form, uh, it's a quadratic equation. It is set equal to zero, so it is in standard form. However, this time it is not just x squared. All right, I've got a three x squared. So I'm gonna look for a GCF. There's no GCF, three is prime, seven is prime, nothing I can pull out there. All right, and so I'm actually gonna have to do my diamond problem and generic rectangle to figure this one out. Three x squared, four, three times four is 12, and it has to multiply to get 12, but add to get negative seven. Well, it's gonna be negative four and negative three. So negative four x, negative three x, and I can pull out a four, that's a minus, a three x, x, and minus one. So now I can rewrite this. This is gonna be zero equals, all right, three x minus four times x minus one. And that's my two groups that I can rewrite that as. And now I can use the zero product property, three x minus four could equal zero to make this true or x minus one could equal zero to make this true. Draw your line down and solve. I'm gonna add four to both sides, giving me three x equals four, divide by three. We get a fraction at this point. X equals four thirds. You could also say one and one third, but I like to leave it as an improper fraction. And in this case here, this one's nice and easy. I just find out that x is one. All right, so what's my answer? I would write it like this. X equals four thirds comma, one. Notice I put x equals and I used a comma. It's not an ordered pair. This is not a point on a graph. I was merely looking for the values of x that make this true. And I found here x could be four thirds or one. So x equals four thirds comma being an or one. And that's my answer. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Let's see some unique ones. All right, what's unique about d here? Well, in this case, now all of a sudden we don't have a trinomial. All right, we've just got ourselves a binomial, but we're still gonna use the same process. So in this case here, x squared plus six x equals zero. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and factor. The first step in factoring is always to pull out a GCF. We haven't seen that yet today, all right, in these problems here we're looking at, but here we do. What's the GCF between x squared and six x? Well, it's x, x goes into both of those. And if I pull that x out, it leaves me with x plus six equals zero. Now, once you pull the GCF out, we look to factor further. Can I factor x plus six further? Well, there's no more x squared, so I can't. So at this point, I'm done. And I could still use the zero product property because I have two numbers, x and x plus six, being multiplied to get zero, all right? And if I multiply them to get zero, then that means either x needs to be zero to make this true, or x plus six needs to be zero to make this true. Well, nothing to solve on the left here, that's done. X could be zero, and over here we do what we've done before. We subtract six from each side, finding that X could be negative six. So the solution here is X could be zero or negative six. This is not an ordered pair, it's not a y-intercept or anything, it's just the two values of X that make that equation true. It's why I started with X equals zero comma negative six. Let's look at this last one here as our final unique example. What's unique about this one? Well, this one is not set equal to zero. It is not in what we call standard form. To use the zero product property, it must be set equal to zero. So I gotta get rid of that three first. All right, when I do that, I find I get x squared plus four x minus 12 equals zero. Now I can factor just x squared with no GCF, brings me down to x and x. And what multiplies to get negative 12, but adds to get four. Well, think about it. It's gonna be six and negative two. That gives me x plus six, x minus two. And therefore, x plus six could be zero, or x minus two could be zero. And we're gonna go ahead and solve that, find out that x could be negative six, or x could be two. So we find here x equals negative six or two. Both of those values make this equation true.